in terms of a couple of key ideas and a few recent headlines. One thing that I think is extremely important to recognize is the bigger scope. We're right now in the midst of a sustainable energy and climate change revolution. What we're observing is nothing less than the most sweeping and important transformational force in the global economy since the internet revolution, and one that is directly linked to the other major transformational trends of our time. The rise of the world's emerging markets, rapid urbanization, the revolution in biotechnology, and you can see as all this happens that what's taking place is the most fundamental change in the global energy paradigm since the roughly simultaneous advent of the internal combustion engine and the widespread distribution of electricity about a century ago. Now, there has been a lot of talk about ethanol over the years. There has been an ebb and flow in this area. And so one of the critical questions to answer first is, is this an enduring change or is this a momentary flirtation? Uh, we believe it's an enduring change because what has happened is a kind of a perfect storm of events in the world. We've seen soaring energy costs and soaring demand for energy and the demand does not look like it's going to abate anytime soon. We've seen increasing discomfort with depending on petroleum suppliers that are unreliable and that are often in unstable regions of the world. Global political and scientific recognition that climate change is real and a serious and a growing problem is another critical factor in this. What's more, the fastest growing economies are contributing more to this uh, issue, with China and India growing uh, from contributing about 20% of global emissions today to twice that by 2050. So climate change is real and it's a growing problem. And then there's the trend that sometimes doesn't make the nightly news. In some respects, it's the most exciting trend associated here, and that's technological progress. In many areas, this has been led by Brazilian innovation, innovation in uh, bioengineering sugar cane that is energy cane that is cultivated specifically to produce maximum energy content, uh, recent breakthroughs in biodiesel production. But this global boom in interest in ethanol and an interest in biodiesel is channeling more and more cash into this innovation. And so cellulosic ethanol, flex fuel powered cars, genetically engineered microbes that can enhance efficiency, use of things like algae to produce biofuels which requires no fresh water and is an essentially unlimited supply, all of these things are driving this process forward. Now, there are other reasons that the trend should not be underestimated. Brazil has already created 500,000 jobs through its ethanol industry, and over the next decade, it expects to create another 1 million jobs that's in Brazil alone from the growth of the ethanol industry. China predicts that it will create over the next decade 9 million jobs in terms of clean energy over the next... And, 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 and then when you consider that two-thirds of the world's population works in agriculture. You get a sense of how big this can be, because these are just two countries I mentioned. And when you consider that one million people die each year in China from air pollution-related causes alone, you get a sense of how urgent it is. And when you think of the fact that one-third of all the people on the Earth currently don't have electricity, and alternative energy sources are the most likely and best ways to meet this demand, you get a sense of what the potential is, particularly since most of these people live in countries with abundant supplies of renewables. When you consider that the sun can provide 15,000 times the Earth's energy needs each day, you get a sense of how much common sense it makes to harness it, especially since oil is a process which takes 400 million years to take the solar energy in a plant and turn it into usable energy and biomass can be converted into biofuels in less than 24 hours. Now, a key idea to keep in mind is that we not view what we're considering in terms of a simplistic energy choice. Biofuels won't replace gasoline. That's, in fact, a false choice. Rather, we're entering a new era of true and burgeoning energy choices in which each country, each company, and each individual will have a far greater range of options when it comes to their energy mix one that can be tailored to their resources and means and adjusted as development suggests. That's why we speak and think in terms of green energy, 
Biofuels are an important part of it, the most immediate and proven way that countries can reduce their dependence on foreign oil, and they will remain important as they, they and these markets evolve. But they're not the whole story. Finally, within the changing energy paradigm is a changing development paradigm. Biofuels don't require big capital intensive investments like a petroleum refinery. Small biorefineries can be spread among small farms, out in parts of the country that don't benefit from this. Places that are currently just producing raw commodities will be producing highly value added commodities with a heavy technology component. Latin America can break out of the commodity price cycle and move into something new, putting it in a leadership position in a global technological revolution. This is something completely different. Now, of course, we have to view this in terms of sustainability. We have to preserve our water supplies. We have to ensure food supplies are managed properly. But as Roberto explained, this can be done. What's more, it is being done. Finally, that this region not only leads the world now, but it has the potential to lead the world going forward. Latin America and the Caribbean can be the the Persian Gulf of biofuels. No place is better suited to it. How do we know? Recently, investors from the US and Japan and China and the EU have all launched major, major investments in the region to help learn from the leaders and to help build export supply chains. This could be a chance for Latin America to build the kind of virtuous cycle of development that we've seen in Asia. Bangalore or Singapore's Biopolis and Shenzhen or in Suzhou or in the Malaysian Multimedia Corridor. You could envision a Bangalore of biofuels, a concentration in our hemisphere that is driving this change that's affecting everybody.